Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, as you probably know, I recently started to making videos about React.js library and it's the second episode of it. If you haven't watched uh, the last episode yet, uh, please uh, go to the top link of this video and watch that video because we talked about the basics of React in that video. Okay, uh, today we want to uh, go further in React.js, talk about some basic information and concepts that you require to know before you start making awesome user interfaces with React.js library. Before we start, please subscribe to my channel in order to receive notifications whenever a new episode is out there and please uh, uh, share your thoughts about this video underneath and uh, also put a thumbs up in order to uh, encourage me to make more content. Uh, in React.js library, we use JSX syntax to define our HTML elements. As you can see, they are really similar to uh, HTML syntax that we were using before but also we will have some customized components. We can write some components using React library and also use them. For example, we can have a component for this uh, paragraph flag and pass the, for example, the title, the icons and everything that we want. So for making the first component, I need to have a new JavaScript file inside the source folder. I want to make a new folder, uh, for example, component. And inside the components, I want to, for example, define a hello world JS file. And here I have two options to write it as we talked uh, about it before in the previous episode. We can use uh, class components or functional components. So for example, I can use a function hello world and from this parameter I can get the props that I will talk about it completely what are the props and a state in the react for example inside this uh, component I'm gonna have a paragraph which contains hello world message here and the another thing that we should know uh, in each component each react.js component we should import this line we should import react from react.js library and the only thing that is remained is to export uh, if you know about uh, es6 you definitely are aware that uh, for exporting components we should use export command in order to be able to call the other components inside the other files so i export hello world from here and now i can import them import hello world and then from keyboard and you can specify the location for it components and Hello world. Yeah, what's the problem? Module not found. Uh, I need to add this. Yeah, now you can see it's imported, but I haven't used it yet. Uh, I can put it inside my HTML elements. For example, I can remove the header tag, and then in order to use, I use lowered in this way and then close the tag you can see it's 
similar to HTML tags, but actually it's a, a customized component. And also I'm able to define another component and use it inside this. And this hierarchy can be for several, several, several components continued. Okay. Uh, uh, for exporting elements, if I just have one component inside this JavaScript file, I can use default keyword here. If I use it uh, uh, now, I can remove these brackets from here and now you can see that it just import the a default component and so I don't need to specify name of it for example I can use x s f whatever you want and then put it here as you see as you can see it works okay uh, now if I want to send uh, some data to this component for example like this one class name equals to app I am able to do this same as the other tags for example message is gonna be hi from app file and here I can read it from the props I can remove it and put the message here in order to de uh, detract it from here and remove it now I'm able to show that message so uh, in uh, many as many as you want you can have uh, props for example test is gonna be two and I can set the test to be shown here. So that was the concept of props. We named them props and it's really useful in uh, React.js because in order to send data to each component, we are able to do it using props. And in case that we have a component that has some children, let me fix the name of it. Hello world and move it here. Uh, so our component can uh, have some children. For example, I have a paragraph tag. This is test. And here, if I want to print uh, the children, I can use the children props as well. I need to add it here. So now you can see that uh, all the data that we sent inside from the uh, content of this element will be passed to the component as a prop with the name of children. We can't use any other names for the children prop. And also we can use class components like the function components and if you want to see how it is, uh, let's write a class named hello world extends react library dot component and then I should have a render method sorry I can put it here I need to have a return first and then inside the return I can have my props but I need to define them so for example const test 
message and Jupyter from this dot props and let's remove it yeah and you can see it works same as before the other topic that we want to uh, teach you in this uh, episode is states states are so important in react and sometimes uh, if we don't understand them deeply we will get into some troubles and they can be also confusing so the steps uh, states are used for internal communication inside a, each component for example my component uh, can have several behavior inside itself i mean that this component don't want to send the data to the another component to be processed and then written back from that component we can do it inside this uh, my own component and when we add states to our components it's like something that we are adding a brain to our brainless component in order to have a states we can use a set a state method for example here i have a constructor and inside this constructor i want to define my default state status so this dot state is gonna be an object for me and the first step is to have a variable for example let name it step and then set the default value 0 for it and for example uh, name is gonna be an empty string here and I want to show the current state inside my paragraph here so I am able to access to the state object using this dot state and then for example name of my single state is step or the better way is that define a constant variable for it for example a state and name and this dot state so it's better now we can use the step here and yeah and what's the problem oh we forgot to call the a parent constructor so i should use the super keyword with the props yeah and you can see that the current value of my state is zero let's go further and try to change it in order to change my state i want to have a function on button click and it's gonna be an error function and uh, i want to add it one step so i should use here set state method it's a built-in method of react.js library and we only are allowed to use this syntax inside the constructor anywhere else if you want to change the state you have to use set state syntax and now i can set step step is gonna be for example this dot state dot step plus one and here i need to have a for example a button let's make it a little bit better it's better to have a div yeah and inside it uh, this one and the button and on click 
should uh, call unbutton click function for me and the tags for example add or increase yeah we can see our button here and when I click on it it will uh, execute the unbutton click function for me and here I use a set state to increase the value of my state okay guys that was state concept in the react it's so simple but when your component grows uh, you will have too many uh, properties in our state object and sometimes the face with uh, complicated situations inside our components but we should try to keep it as simple as possible and try to divide our components to the several ones in order to divide the logic between several components to uh, keep it as simple as possible uh, let's go for uh life cycle in react and see how it works currently we introduced you with the constructor method and the other one is component did mount you can see there are several uh, functions like this for handling the life cycle of your component and here uh, i have component did mount uh, this comp this function will only run once when you uh, when your component uh, did load for example I can have a timer here using a set interval and inside it I need to have for example set state and increase the value also I can instead of using this I just can call this function and don't forget to use this command for it and here oh sorry and I need to define the interval it's gonna be run in every second so let's see Will start with zero and set interval. Oh, I forgot. I need to have a function here, and inside the function, I can run my command. Yeah, you can see. And uh, we have another uh, life cycle event. Uh, its component will unmount and uh, when a component is being destroyed uh, this function uh, will be run so here i can remove my interval using clear interval and then this dot uh, timer Yeah, it works very properly. Uh, okay, guys, I think it's enough for today. And we uh, talked about the uh, basics of React.js library, the things that you had to know before to start making awesome user interfaces. In the next episode, we want to implement, for example, if we had time, we can implement the header section and turn it into a react.js application thank you guys for watching if you are interested to know more about uh, these topics please watch these videos